Hello everyone and welcome to Wine Talk with the Rooster Sommelier. Before we get into Wine Talk, I want to give a shout out to my professor and master sommelier, Rick Garced, who challenged me to be the best I can be in my wine career and the pronunciation of French words as correctly as possible. I want you all to know I was trained by the best, but sometimes the brain interprets what the eyes see. And in my case, I will pronounce words phonetically, especially French words. So y'all, forgive me if I do, and correct me in a kind way. That being said, let's talk about wine. This session, session four, is all about cultivating your palate, which means doing some heavy lifting with your sense of smell and taste. Now, sometimes um, our sense of smell can lead us astray, but overall it sends us important messages about our surroundings and things in the relative proximity. And in this case, strengthening your palate by identifying different aromas. Recent research suggests that people can identify scents as quickly as 110 milliseconds after their first sniff. So the heavy lifting that your nose needs to do is smell everything. This is the only way you can increase your wine aroma vocabulary. When you're shopping for herbs and spices, don't just look at the pretty colors, smell it. Have you ever wondered why some chef's food tastes better than others? Well, it's because some take the time to look, smell, and taste the herbs and spices that they use to create the envisioned cuisine. So we have um, some apples and some oranges and some tomatoes and apricot and cherries here. And I just want to give you an idea of what you should do um, when, you, when you're at the store before selecting whatever it is that you choose. I wish I had some, um, some other things like herbs and spices, but we're gonna use these for right now. So when you pick a, a, a particular one because of its beauty, its color, smell the core. The core is where the flavor smells are released. Ooh, give it a deep smell. And then you can say, ooh, that's a beautiful apple. The same with anything. The core is where everything happens. The orange, where the seeds are. You'll get that fresh aroma. Now, if you smell the, the, uh, the earth side, okay, which is, you know, the end, like for instance, the peach, you're going to smell peach, but you're going to smell more of earth, you know, and all the, the things that help to make it grow. But if you smell the core, oh, you can smell that sweetness and you can almost taste what it exactly smells like. So I know in these, during these particular uncertain times, it is difficult to uh, perform these types of exercises needed to increase your uh, memory in terms of identifying aromas. But there are other alternatives you can use to continue developing your palate, such as the, the sommelier's best friend, the Wine Aromas Collection. Now this one is mine. I have an 88 collection and it has um, an aroma wheel, which it's called a wheel, but mine is a chart because this is actually a game as well. But anyway, the chart is listed with pictorial representations of the various different um, types of fruits with their aromas um, in these little vials. So let's take one, like this one for instance. This one is, let's smell. Ooh, jasmine, one of my favorite scents. So there's a lot of different uh, aromas on, on the aroma wheel or, you know, in this particular case, my game, the uh, Aroma Master. It has all the various different types of uh, scents to help you strengthen. And, and actually, it has wine faults as well. So if, you, if a wine is, is um, not good, okay, and we call it corked. Okay, which means that there is other stuff that's happening when the cork uh, releases some of the um, the enzymes from the, uh, the the materials that are made that make the cork. It gets into the wine, and once it does that, it changes the flavor of the wine. It can make it you know taste like old socks. 
you don't want that. But anyway, that smell is here as well. So our sense organs are the brain's window to the external world. And the molecules that activate the sense of smell in technical terms is called olfaction which are airborne and they enter the body through the nose mouth and attach to receptor cells. And in humans, there are millions of these cells, but there are only approximately 400 different types of olfactory receptors. The closely linked taste, which is gustation, and the smell, which is olfaction, senses help us to navigate the chemical world. Just like hearing is the perception of sound and sight is the perception of light, smell and taste are your perceptions of tiny molecules in the air and in food. The sense of smell is dependent on the detection of these molecules that enter your nose and bind to the specialized olfactory neurons that reside in the small patches of membranes high inside the navel cavity which is why we swirl wine in the glass to bring out all of those aromas before we actually sniff. Sniffing opens and releases the distinct aromas in the wine. The olfactory cells are equipped with several hair-like structures called cilia that are receptive to different odor molecules. So, um, for example, um, some red wines can contain a bouquet of different aromas and each part, such as cherries, vanilla, leather, um, uh, are dist distinct smells. Each scent simulates a unique combination of olfactory cells creating a distinct activity pattern for cherries, leather, or vanilla in this example. Um, the signature pattern of, of, of the activity gets transmitted to the olfactory bulb along the long extended arms of neurons called axons. And axons from the olfactory neurons travel to two different olfactory bulbs, one in each nostril, which is why we put the, our nose in the glass when we smell the wine. Next. The information encoding the smell of cherries and is processed and then passed to the brain, where the odor and taste information are mixed. Together, these senses create a, the perception of flavor. I know I'm being a little scientific, so, so let me summarize in a different way. Our brain and sense of smell work like a computer processing data. The nose receives the data, which is processed and sent to the brain, and the output created is the perception of the encoded smell. It is said that a person with an expensive palate likes only high-priced culinary treats. Someone who tastes slight nuances in food is said to have a well-developed palate. And someone who likes only fancy foods is said to have a sophisticated palate. I don't know what is said about people who like fast foods, but in reality, most taste receptors are a combination of sight, smell, and taste. So when you go to taste uh, wine tasting, think about what the wine looks like, smells like, and can your taste buds confirm what your brain already knows. So um, now for some fun and good wine reading, here is the Winemaker for a Day Blending Kit and the book Passion for Wine, The French Idea, and The American Dream. The book is written by my boss and uh, wine vintner Jean-Charles Boisé and Marnie Old, our master sommelier. So here it is. It has a lot of very um, uh, different wines. Um, these two people put this together with uh, Raymond Vineyards, and they are Marnie Old and Boise, uh, Jean Charles Boise, are the dynamic duo of wines. And the blending kit is currently out of stock due to popular demand, but the book Passion is uh, available on my website. Um, theroostersommelier.com. So check back for the blending kit. I'm sure we'll have it sometime soon and it'll be available. But until then, stay safe 
and join the wine club, wine society as we call it. Cheers. If you find this video fun and informative, subscribe to my YouTube channel, Wine Talk with the Rooster Sommelier. It's free. And email me at info at theroostersommelier.com with your questions or comments. Cheers. Cheers.